In today's lesson, we will discuss the integration of controllers. In the previous lesson, we mentioned vManage versus the initialization process of vSmart and vBond. We focused on two main points. The first point is that we create a whitelist in vManage. The second point is that we use certificates for mutual authentication, thus establishing a DTLS or TLS session among our three controllers. This session creates a netconf channel. Today, we will implement this in a lab environment. Now, let's switch to our lab environment. Our lab environment is implemented within VMware which is very convenient. By importing an OVF file, we can create our controllers. For example, by creating and registering a virtual machine, selecting the OVF and clicking Next, we then name it and find our file. Here is our downloaded OVF image. Simply import, click next a few times, and it's done. Similarly, vBond and vSmart are imported in the same way. It's important to note that after importing vManage, a modification is required. This modification involves manually adding a 20 GB hard drive and then initializing it. This is something to be mindful of. In the last lesson, we also specifically mentioned our topology, which is a headquarters with two branch offices and a dual DC topology. How to connect them via VMware's port group into a topology like this, including our controllers and our WANAM simulator. Let's take a look at this table first. What does this table mean? In the ESXi environment, we created a series of port groups. When we wish to communicate via the same port group, we put them together. For example, our controllers are all in the same port group. This way, they can communicate. OK, we see that our controllers need to be directly connected, so we place them in the same port group. Please look at the edit of our network interface. There is one interface. We place it in the controller's port group. Let's observe each one. You can see they can communicate directly. Now, you can see, OK, this way, I have explained to everyone our topology, how it is implemented in VMware. Okay, next we will look at our controller integration. First, let's understand our IP planning. Here we find there is a VPN. There is a VPN 5112, such an IP address. Facilitating my remote connection to the controller through the terminal, purely for ease of control, convenience in control. Managed through the out-of-band interface, convenient for my control. At the same time, in this controller, I have configured the basic IP. Just now, everyone saw the same. Here is an IP address, VPN. This is out of band. OOB address, similar. You can see we all have the basic IP, so our underlying communication is complete. Next, we did the second thing. Configured some basic information. The basic information is here. Starting from the system, configured with a host name, system IP. Remember in the first lesson, 
we specifically mentioned the system IP, similar to our routers, router ID. It's like an IP address, but it doesn't participate in routing. It's just a label. This is the second configuration. The third configuration. Our organization name. The fourth is VBOND information. These three are the same. The difference is that each has its own unique ID. Okay, that was the second matter. The third matter. We just mentioned using certificates for authentication. Certificates are often strongly related to time. So we configured NTP as well. Here you can see our NTP server, our IP, and the NTP server are connected. This is the same. Currently, our NTP is effective. Its status is now synchronized, okay? Our basic conditions are met. Next, what we need to do is create a whitelist and create certificates. Now we will start by creating certificates. Creating certificates. I have configured our vManage role as a CA. Here, I have prepared a key and a root certificate in advance. The specific commands I have summarized for you. This section is about how to configure our vManage role. To be set up as a CA with these two commands here. First, we have a key, then a root certificate. Two steps and it's done. Here, I have already implemented it in vManage. After implementation, our vSmart. I copied and pasted the root certificate to the local system. vBond is the same. Copy to the local system. And then installed the certificate. Installing the certificate. The methods have been summarized in our documentation. This document can be shared with you. Everyone can follow the document step by step. Now we are moving on to the next thing creating a whitelist for the root certificate. We have already copied everything commands have been summarized. Next, we add to the whitelist. Before adding to the whitelist, we log into our controller. This is the initial state of logging into the controller. Our controller has only one role. Upon completing the integration, we can see that VSmart is now online. VBond will also come online. Next, we add our controllers. Click on controllers. Add controllers. Add VBond and VSmart. Manually creating such a list. We call this list a whitelist, no problem. It's quite simple. Add it manually. The next thing we need to do is certificates, okay? We observe. The status of the certificates is not installed. We now go to our CA to apply for this certificate. Before applying for the certificate, we create a certificate signing request, okay? We click to choose. We switch to certificate. Click on the controller here to generate a certificate request. We copy the content of this certificate request. Copy and paste it into a notepad. This is our certificate request. Our summary is here. 
Now we take our certificate request. To our VAR manage. There are two methods. We choose the first method. I will download it first. I can see. It's already saved here. No problem. This is the first one. The second one is VSMART. We need to wait here. There's a fail here. Cannot download. I'll deal with this. Fail here, I fixed the earlier error. Our vSmart role under its tunnel interface. NetConf and SAAT were not allowed by default. Now I've made this operation. Now we can see this request is ready. We download it. Previously, we could paste directly. Now we open it with Notepad. OK. Switch to our VM Manage. I am creating this document. Creating with the V command. This is for V bond. Select all and copy. In the same way, we generated three certificate request files for controller roles, and it only takes one command to generate the certificates. These are issued to us through the root certificate. For our devices certificates, understandable. For the VM manage role, it already has its own root certificate. This is VBON. We directly copy and paste this set of commands. There's a mistake in the command. I'll correct the command, okay? There was a spelling error earlier. There was an extra space here. We see in the previous command. There was an extra space here. This is vBeyond. Next, we generate for vSmart 
vSmart's request file. Next is using vManage. Okay, next is installation, starting with vMage. We use copy and paste method to install our certificate files. Installing certificates for the controller can also use file method. Here I use certificate text form to install, okay? Here we enter the installation process. Just wait a moment. We continue to install the second certificate. This is VSMART. Installing the second certificate can refresh, can expand the update process. Installation complete. Next, installing the third certificate. VBOM, starting installation. Installation successful. All our certificates are installed. Status is now normal. Here it is already installed. They are updating switch to our VM manage. Okay. We need to wait for some time, our controllers will come online. Please wait here for a moment. After waiting a few minutes, we have already seen VSmart, VBond, and VA Manage integrated. Correspondingly, in our command line, we can see the respective sessions. Our sessions are now established. So today's session on certificates concludes. Next, we'll provide to everyone the 4.5 section. Using our VM Manage as a CA to issue certificates to our three controllers. And then we integrated our controllers by manually adding them to the whitelist. Keep in mind that using VM Manage as a CA in a corporate environment is not supported by Cisco TAC technical support. In a corporate environment, we need to purchase official CA certificates or use Cisco's CA. Please be aware of this. All right. In a corporate setting, we need to procure formal CA certificates or you could use Cisco's CA. I hope everyone takes note of this. Okay. Today's lesson ends here.